Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 48. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 6 or the PDF for chapter 6, just click on the link below the video and then scroll way down to the finance class section. Hey, last video we saw how one bondholder who originally bought the bond on the issue date when the cash went into the corporation, this bondholder can then sell to uh, someone else. Um, at any time uh, after the initial bond issuance. And in that example, we knew the yield to market, which is our discount rate, and we calculated a price. So this person was willing to pay a premium, $1,009.36. Now we want to look at a slightly different um, aspect of this same problem here. Uh, imagine if we had all of the cash flows, right? And by the way, that should be negative. Uh, that's because that's being paid out. But what if we knew the cash flows and we didn't know the discount rate? Let's go over to Excel. Example number 11. We have our price paid for the bond, the face value, future value, and our periodic coupon payments. We have one year left, just like in example 10. Can we calculate the yield to market and the effective annual yield? You betcha. First, let's calculate our total number of periods. So n is 2 times years. And now, just like last chapter, when we used the rate function to calculate uh, the discount rate, or the interest rate, whichever direction you're going, we can use the rate function to calculate our period yield to market. NPER, that's the total number of periods, payment, this is from the bondholder number two point of view, so it's positive because interest is coming into your pocket. Present value, that's the price, it's a negative. Comma, future value, that's the uh, future repayment. The type, by default, it assumes that it's at the end, and so this one is at the end. The guess, we don't need that. And enter. There we have it. That's our period rate, so, so to get back up to our yield to market, which is just like a APR, we have to take our period rate times our number of periods. There's our yield to market. So we certainly, given cash flows, could figure out our discount rate or yield to market. We can also figure out the effective annual yield. Remember, this, this is quoted, right? 9% uh, compounded twice a year. But the effective rate will take those two inputs and give us a single rate that is the true rate. Um, and with an n equals 1. So I'm going to use the effect function. We take our nominal rate. Nominal um, is our yield to market for the whole year, the quoted rate, comma, and NPR. That's per year. So we have our uh, number of periods per year. And we got 9.20. So that's the true rate or the effective annual yield. Certainly, if you wanted to do it the long way, you'd say uh, 1 plus the period rate raised to the n minus 1. And that would give us the same rate. Hey, those aren't the same. This says 203. Well, if we increase the decimals here, we could see that, in fact, it is. Uh, th this is a decimal. This is formatted as a percent. All right, so uh, effect function for <laughs> effective annual yield and the rate for the period yield to market. All right, we'll see you next video.